So this video is all about making Ava the ladybird. So um, actually crocheting the individual parts is the easy bit. Um, and the clever bit about this design is the way that you don't really have to sew many individual pieces on. You are by and large actually crocheting them together. And that makes it really um, strong. All your joins are really strong and you're not having to do very much sewing up at all. So we're gonna start by joining our base and our body first. So you've got two pieces. Now I'm I'm going to be making one that is the classic way round. So my body and base are both black here. That would be where I've got a contrasting shell colour. Now with the Harlequin ones, so with the ones that are in reverse where you've got a shell colour that's black, you will actually be making your body and base in the um, brighter colour. Within your kit, you'll have one ball of black, one ball of cream, they're fixed. You'll have your two safety eyes and then you will have one bright that you select. So um, it, the ingredients are all the same, whether you choose to do a, um, I guess a more common one or whether you choose to do the harlequin ones that are in reverse but all you must remember is that your body and base will need to be in that bright color if you are going for one of these harlequin ones that are in reverse so with these two you've added two centralizer markers in and this is because you're not making a circle you're actually making an oval and so what those markers will help you do is to put those two pieces together um, and then be able to know that that's where your head will actually go at the end so put your two markers together and actually tuck in all of your ends and this is what i mean about minimizing your sewing up tuck all your ends in rather than have to sew them in then put your hook in through your two stitches that your centralizers are in. So put your hook in there through that one and through the other one. So you've got it through both sides of the fabric. Then using the same colour that you're crocheting in. So for me, that's going to be black. If you were doing a harlequin, it would be in your bright colour. Um, yarn over to bring that through. And then we're going to double crochet all the way around the edge. So go in through that side of the, of the base and then up through the top of the body. And you're going to double crochet through both sides of the fabric all the way around. So I'll keep going until I get to um, the, and one of the ends there so you can see how I'll do that bit. Now you've got the right number of stitches in both. So don't be worried if you think your base looks really small compared to the top of your body. That's what will um, form that lovely um, kind of rounded shape at the end is the fact that you're, you're even though you've got the same number of stitches, your base is obviously flat, whereas the top is coned. So when you get to this bit here, um, you're going to go through this side and you'll actually be going into the top stitch of that one up there, like that. And you can just tuck your ends in, which is lovely and neat. It means there's no need to sew them in afterwards. So continue on. And what I would advise is not trying to stuff this until you've got it at least three quarters of the way around, because that will actually make it much easier to then add that in. So once you get to this point here where you've only got a few stitches left, pop your stuffing in through the gap. And all just to clarify, um, if I wasn't clear before, is they do need to be right side outwards. That's why you're joining your centralizers together and make sure that it's your right side of both sides that's facing outwards. Then you do your last few stitches to close that off. And then you can sew in your ends before we move on to the shell. And at this stage, you no longer need both centralizers in. I would li just leave one in position and remove the other one. There we go, so I'm gonna take one out like that. Leave one in and finish off these last few stitches before breaking yarn and sewing my ends in. So once you've sewn all your ends in, it's time to put the shell together. So take your two shell pieces and in the same way that we did before, we're going to minimise having to sew our ends in. So you can just break your yarn and tuck your ends inside. Line up your two shell pieces like that. And what we're going to do is crochet them together in one direction through both sides as well. So take your piece like that, put your hook in through two stitches and crochet right the way along both sides of that fabric. Okay. 
and then when you get to the end of the first one you're going to go straight on to the other one so as a right-handed crocheter i am moving from the right hand side to the left hand side um as a left-handed crochet you'll be going the other way around but there's no you don't need to worry about that at all and um, it's more to get them in one continuous piece so that these v's um where you're doing the double crochets through both sides are sitting on um, the fabric on the same side so let me show you what i mean by that so when you reach the end there we go like that what you're going to do is get your second shell piece and holding them with the curves both downwards go straight on to this second one like that and in exactly the same way as we just did so I'm just tucking that end in. Do you see how that's my end? Tuck that in so we don't have to sew that in separately. Go through both sides of the fabric and go straight on to going across that second one. Now, when you finish going across both wings, um, both shells, should I say, shell pieces, it's now time to make a decision about whether your ladybird is going to have wings or not. So um, your pattern will have the wing pattern in um, anyway, um, but they are optional. So you can either go for leaving your shell slightly open and adding those wings on at the back of your ladybird, or you can go for completely closing it if you don't want to go for your wings. Now, if, if you are a total beginner to crochet, so maybe this is one of the first patterns you've made, the wings are a little bit more challenging than everything else. So you could always opt to leave those wings out and just finish your ladybird off with that lovely closed shell. Because if you are going to do a closed shell, all you will do at this stage is you'll actually line your centralizer up with the middle of your two shell pieces and then you will double crochet your shell onto your base all the way around the edge. But I'm going to do one here that isn't a closed shell. I'm going to do one ready for my wings to go in. So I'll just show you the difference there. So if you are going in for one that's totally closed, line that centralizer up with the middle of those shells. And what you will do now is you'll just start there. You wouldn't have needed to cut your yarn. You could have just started continuously and you'll crochet all the way around the edge. But if you're doing the ones with the wings, you need to leave them slightly open. So what you need to do is count eight stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches away from the back of your shell. And then you're actually going to crochet and start there in attaching it onto the body because that will leave those the shell slightly open at the back for the wings to go into position. So all you do there with exactly the same technique, you can see I've got the opening of my shell at my centralizer point attach your yarn on and then going through the shell and then through the base. So you go through that stitch on your shell and then through the stitch on the edge of the base. So you're going to go right round like that. Doing a double crochet in order to attach your shell on. So I left eight at the end of here. I'll go all the way round and I'll leave eight on the other side. So in the same way as we did with the base, I would actually sew all your ends in and snip them off as you go along because it will keep it nice and neat and tidy. So what we're going to do now is if you're leaving yours open as I am for those wings to come out of the back, we're actually going to double crochet the two shell pieces together, two there and then five rounds beyond. So that will just leave them peeping open like that at the back. If you're going for the closed shell version without the wings, then you just continue and double crochet right the way around the top to close it off. So what you need to do, taking your shell colour or you could always use a contrast colour if you wanted to, to put them together. Slip stitch at the point of your centralizer once again, and then you're going to double crochet between these two pieces. Now, it's easiest if you actually go around the vertical posts that are between the rounds. So what I mean by that, because that's quite a wordy description, is you go into this one and you see that vertical post there that sits between the stitches on the rounds and then that one on that side like that and then double crochet through both of those. So you go right the way across the top like that, going through both sides, double crocheting those together. Your starting rings will um, come together at the same point, and then you go five rounds beyond that if you're going to leave them open, or go right the way closed if you're going to do a closed wing ladybird. So break yarn and sew your ends in again in the same way. Right, now moving on to our head. So in your kit, you'll have a set of safety eyes. Obviously, you can choose to not add the safety eyes if you don't want to. Um, you can just go for embroidering a couple of eyes. But I find on the mini beasts, it's really nice, especially if we're using black yarn 
to have that lovely shine on the eyes. So you've got your headpiece and your headpiece has got a contrasting little bit on the back. And that's actually to act as a guide when we're sewing up. Now, I find it easiest to add my safety eyes once my stuffing is in because I can see the shape of that head. So put a little bit of stuffing into that head. Might have been a bit ambitious there with the amount going in. So put a little bit of stuffing into that head. There we go. And you should have a, um, a taller dome at the top and a wider bit at the bottom. If you see the shape of that head like that, um, if it's not, just squish it a little bit so you feel like you've got that kind of shape um, on your head before you start. And then position your safety eyes, knowing that you might have to pull them out and put them back in a few times. But you're aiming to go, um, as your pattern says, um, it gives you a bit of a guide on the round that you'll be adding them in. They're about there, but know that this really is more of an art than a science, um, adding the safety eyes. If you pop them in like that and you conclude, no, that doesn't look very cute. I want them to be a little bit further apart than that or a bit higher up. You can always pull them back out again. But once you've got them in like that and you're happy with your positioning, what you need to do is just manipulate that stuffing down a little bit so you can get in to get to the back of the safety eye like that. And then you just push this bit into position. So don't worry about doing it when you've already stuffed. I find that seeing the shape will make it a lot easier for you than trying to guess that before your stuffing goes in. So push your two backs on like that. Um, as far as they'll go down, you should hear them click towards the end, although the stuffing does tend to muffle that if you're doing it around the stuffing. So you've got your two safety eyes into position. What we now need to do is gather the stitches on the back of our head. All I'm going to do there is just pull a little bit of stuffing back up into the top of the head because I squished it down a little bit there when I was getting those um, backs in. Let me just tuck that in too. You can always snip any little bits of stuffing like that that come out, you can always snip off at the surface. Right, so gather our stitches on the back of our head. And then this contrasting panel that you finished your head off in is going to act as your sewing up guide to add your head on. So gather those together. And then positioning it once again using your centralizer point, but we're actually going to remove it at this point because we should feel relatively certain of where our front is um, from this point onwards. Then line up your head. Uh, the bottom of your head there so turn it with your eyes facing upwards and line up the bottom of your head with that color change line and the bottom of the shell so there's the bottom of our shell there's our color change line there is the center of our head and start there so then sew all the way around that color change line like this so do a stitch through the head and then a stitch through the shell and you're going to go all the way around that circle adding that stitch in so you'll have a really nice firm head in place. It's actually far easier for me to have this sewing up guide as well. Um, despite the amount of, well, you can see how many ladybirds I have sewn up on the table in front of me. And despite the quantity of animals that I have sewn up over the last 10 years, um, actually having a nice guide like this um, does still make it easy to know that you are getting the right number of stitches in and getting them in the right place. So you go right the way around like that, using that as a guide until your head is nicely in position. Then it's time for some choices. So this is a true mix and match kit um, where you've got lots of different extras. There are, well, thousands of different species of ladybird in lots of different colours, different spot formations. Um, I really hope you enjoy the summer competition this year. Um, I can't wait to see and hear all about your happy places, but also... Um, enjoy the different kind of variations that you opt to do on your ladybirds as you're crocheting the one um, that makes you happy whether that be color whether that be a lucky number um, whether you opt to do big spots small spots now what you've got in your pattern is um, a few different patterns for head markings and these are these little white panels on the side um, which we all associate with ladybirds now the smaller ones look like that proportionally the larger ones look like that when you finish them proportionally and then the third option you've got is for the white faced harlequin version where you've actually got a point that comes down the center of the head rather than the two patches that you sew on separately 
Now I've got the larger ones that are going to go on mine here. So to sew those into position, you need to just position them slightly above the eye. So you see you've got your eye there, slightly above your eye, and then sew into the surface of the fabric. And what I tend to do is almost tack it into place first. So I've done the top corner. I'll tack my bottom corner, and then I'll tack my top corner. Check that I'm happy with that from all angles. So I'm happy from the top because you can just see the white creeping in. Um, I'm happy from the side and the bottom. And then what I'll do is I'll actually make sure that that's really firmly sewn into position by actually um, backstitching down the side through the stitches. So put that one into position and then do the same on the opposite side with your other head marking. So we've got our face marking sewn into position. Now it's time to add some antennae. And um, what the way that I've put them on um, is they're both the same pattern, but I've done one of them. So my first one I've done from the front to the back. And then this one I've done from the back to the front with the right side outwards. And what that does is it curves them inwards. So let me explain what I mean by that. So put your hook in there in line with the top of your face marking. Follow your pattern, obviously, with the specifics. Then once you've finished doing all the stitches in the pattern, you then see how we've got it curving inwards because we've got a right side and a wrong side effectively to those stitches that we've worked you put your hook in at the other side of the face marking and slip stitch that into position and what that means is that that antennae curves inwards like that so what you're then going to do on the other side is do it the other way around so you start by slip by doing it there you chain outwards and you slip the other way and that way they will both curve inwards like that now when you're doing your harlequin ones um, it looks best I found to add my antenna onto the top of my black marking or just one stitch out. Um, I wouldn't be tempted to put them into the white. It tends to look a bit more unusual. Um, but obviously, that is your personal choice. But what you can see there is you see how I've attached the antenna onto the edge of that head marking. So put your, put your head marking on first in that contrasting black and then add your antenna on afterwards. Right, so now it is time to add some legs and we're using a very similar technique to how we added the antennae and um, making the most of right side and wrong side in the same way. So what you're going to do is you're going to slip stitch in for that leg. If you are making the open wing um, or the open shell with the wings, you'll be slip stitching in for that leg at exactly where you ended attaching your shell. So you'll actually slip stitch into there to start your legs and your legs will run on this side there'll then be a gap and they'll run on the other side like that and you are making a large a medium and a small so you crochet these first then you leave a gap and you jump to this side and then you actually go the opposite way around so you go small medium and large and that means that both your right sides are facing inwards which causes them to curl in like that now if you are a left-handed crochet you'll just be doing that in reverse so you'll be slipping on this side to begin with and you'll be going the other way around so you do those three first and you make a gap and you go for the other three so just to show you that what you're going to do is crochet one leg so this is me starting with my largest leg then you miss two stitches off the um, base of the shell there so you see i've got one two there which means that you'll slip stitch into that one there like that you slip stitch in that leg and then you're off immediately chaining to work your second one and that's how you move along is you you're missing two for the first two and one for the third one once you've done your first set of legs you're missing 12 stitches so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and then you'll slip stitch in on the other side and you'll be going in reverse order so now we're going to be doing the smallest one first then the medium one and then the large one to finish adding on those legs so next, it's time to do your wings. So when you've made your wings, you have got a definite um, right wing and left wing. And the way that you need to position those when you sew them on is you'll have two straight lines down the center and they'll move outwards like that as triangles. And you've got a chart to help you um, with that in your pattern. 
And I found the easiest way to sew these on is to actually crochet them together first. So what I'm going to do is put my hook into the top right hand corner of my right one. Again, as a left-handed person, you might want to do this the other way around. So go from the top of your left one, your left one across to your right one. And I'm just going to double crochet across the top of these stitches. So this is very similar to the way that we join the shell together. like that so I've done six stitches off the top of that one and then I'm just going to hold my other one up and do the same thing across the top of that one because that's going to be a little bit easier to sew into position so I've got them like that break my yarn and then positioning these wings there is a definite right side and wrong side to them. That's why we had to have um, a different pattern for the right and left. So your right side, you should see all those Vs around the outside. So you want your right side upwards and take your little shell and just bend that back a little bit on your ladybird. Tuck these up onto the inside like that. And then what you're going to do is the edge of the wing here should meet your shell and your body join and the same on the other side. So they'll meet it like that. And all you need to do is take your longest thread. In fact, I would advise not doing what I've done. Sew all your other ends in first so that all you've been left with is the two that you've just created when attaching them together. And all you need to then do is fold those up and sew along that line so that your wings are firmly in position. If you're at this stage and you decide that you want to go for a closed ladybird you can always rejoin and just close that off there like that you could even close it and leave your wings in position if you wanted to so you don't have to leave them open once you've got those wings sewn into position like that you could always decide to rejoin here and close off the whole of the shell just leaving those little wings poking at the bottom like that and then it is time for the fun bit so now it's time to add some spots now, I have a feeling you're likely to get as carried away uh, with making ladybirds as I have done. Uh, this is really enjoyable, basically making a decision about how many spots your ladybird is going to have at the end. So what you're doing is making all of your spots individually. We've put this lovely guide in, which I certainly know will be being pinned to um, the wall by my desk. Um, so you've got a lovely guide to making the different ones and where we've roughly positioned the spots. But it really is up to you where you position these spots. Obviously, some of them are symmetrical. Some of them are really asymmetrical. So it's up to you where you want to put them. What I would say, if it's the first time you're doing it, is it can be quite helpful to use blocking pins like these because you can even position them all in like that before you start to make sure you're going to be able to fit on the quantity that you've made because you'll end up with all these small little circles for yourself to sew into place. Now, I've uh, just to show you before we finish this video because you're nearly there now on completing your ladybirds is this is fully closed with no wings attached. So the difference is I crocheted all the way around the outside. Then the in-flight ones, which is the ones that you're seeing um, a lot the in-flight ones have got the shell left open with the wings then inserted into the back then what I've just done there is I actually went back and I closed the shell off so it'd be nice and easy for you to see the whole shell to put the spots on so there I've got those wings coming out the back but I've actually gone for a closed shell in the end by rejoining and closing it off the choice is yours that's the lovely thing about this pattern is that they're all going to be slightly different whether you go for ones that are in flight walking or just landed maybe and they haven't fully put their wings away yet now when it comes to your spots so you're going to be crocheting them like um, this as individuals and to get these on nice and neat to finish your shells first things first is when you've finished and you've broken yarn have you fastened it off like that Bring your wool needle up through that last stitch there and that will turn it into a perfect circle before you sew it on. So make sure you do that because that'll just um, even up that last difference between the two rounds. So do that first, then position it wherever you're going to put it on this ladybird. And I will warn you, it's very addictive because when you finish it, you can you, you immediately see how you could have done a different one. So put that into position there. You've got small, medium and large spots within your pattern. Um, so you'll be able to do a, a lovely mixture of all three sizes. 
and over sew around like that. So I'm back, not over sew, should I say, back stitch around. So that keeps your black in your black and your orange in your orange without ending up with stitches going across onto your shell. So do you see how I've just ran right the way around the outside like that, back stitching? That keeps it lovely and neat. And then you can just sew right through and finish that off around a stitch. Now my end got quite short there. Leave yourself a long enough end when you make them. As you might have noticed in the beginning there, what I did is my tail end, I cut a little bit shorter so that I can wrap that up underneath. Then with your other end, do what I did initially. So neaten that up by coming through like that. Wrap that tail end underneath so you don't have to cut that very short at all so you won't see it and then position your spot where you're going to sew it see this is where it this is where it gets quite fun and it can be quite useful to pin them on in place first because you've then decided where they're all going to go now when you're doing them across the wings that's another thing i'll just tell you before we finish this video is let me find an example here's an example so when it's closed it might look like one single spot that goes across both wings like that so you can sew one circle across both wings if you've got yours flying like this one this is made in magenta just so you can see what i've done there is made the same circles but i've actually sewn them on half through the wings because that would mean if it was closed it was forming that spot but i've sewn half underneath and half on top so you just get the impression that there's a whole spot there when it is closed um, I'll just, so I'll finish there. I hope that's everything you need. I honestly can't wait to see the posts about your happy places. And um, this is this year's Toft Summer Competition, Ava the Ladybird, um, with the hashtag Ed's Happy Places, because you're making this lovely, happy little bug. And then you're going to tell us about your happy places in your life. So where you like to crochet, um, where you like to do maybe other hobbies, a place that you go that you always know will cheer you up when you maybe need a little bit of um, a smile in your life. So just to talk you through these last ones so you can see them so this is the pink spotted lady one lady beetle made in our magenta here we've got the 15 spotted lady beetle made in our shale so you can see that one um we've got the um stone there so that one is the ashy gray lady beetle the seven spot is the classic so that's that one here is that classic one in the red the two spot which i absolutely love in the orange i can't decide whether i like the ruby more than the orange again like i say you're going to be making loads i warn you uh the orange ladybird because what's lovely about that one is you've got these spots in a contrasting color so that's a really different looking one there because you're doing your spots in white for the first time the 22 spot warning this one isn't for the fate hearted um obviously it's a lot of individual sewing of those spots but it looks great once you've all got those in position. Then the two Harlequins. Um, Harlequin could be done in any of the different colours. So don't feel like you can just limit it to yellow and red. You could go for orange. You've got a full selection of all the Toff spectrum. But the Harlequin, you have to make your body and base in your bright colour because you're going to be using your black to make that shell. Then you make a white head um, and you add this face marking on and your antenna either side. I think this is a really cute one as well when they're made in the Harlequin. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please share your ladybirds using Ed's Happy Place. I can't wait to see them.